Hello everyone, Skylar Thomas here, and I have another tagging controversy video. So if you want to turn it off now, or if you want to turn the volume up, whichever is your uh, pleasure. Anyway, you have been warned. I thought I would start with my own background with tagging to help explain how I came to the opinion that I have on the matter now. My uh, history with tagging dates back to 2004 with my first white shark um, experience. I guess you could say it dates back to 2000 with my first shark diving because, you know, half the sharks there were tagged or had jaws broken from either fishermen or from researchers who were catching the sharks to tag them. But let's jump to the white sharks in 2004. Like many people out there, you're trying to figure out how to work with these incredible, amazing animals. And I did some research and found a program online in South Africa that said that I would come work and uh, be a crew member and a volunteer and assist with research, including tagging and identification and things like that. And being enthusiastic about doing anything to help these animals or see these animals, I of course thought it was wonderful. So I arrive in South Africa and on the boat, I'm already hearing people debating the merits of tagging. And I'm brand new to this. They're saying we've already tagged so many sharks. How much more information can we get? Remember, this is 2004 that this is happening. Back in the United States in 2006, I worked a season out at the Farallon Islands with a tour company there and got a little more exposure to the debate and they were, again, of course, very different opinions on the matter. But the real turning point for me in retrospect was when I followed up, again it was 2006, I was a support diver on a boat in the Dry Tortugas and there was a documentary film crew from Canada on board and for one of their scenes they wanted to tag a shark. One of the crew members was nice enough to hold my camera to get me in a couple of shots so I can share a little bit with you. The show itself had nothing to do with tagging. It was about evolution and the shark part was to talk about their skin. But you know, it's always interesting to catch a shark and pull it on board and do the measurements and all that scientific stuff. In order to do that, they had to call in a scientist. So the show flew in a student scientist. He wasn't a full-blown scientist. I don't even know what scientist means. Does it mean that you took a biology class at some point and are now uh, referenced occasionally? Does it mean that you reached a PhD level in your career? Does it mean that you dabble in it every now and then? Do you even need to have a degree in science as long as you're performing research to be called a scientist. I don't know because that seems to be a matter of opinion. Anyway, back to the story. So this marine biologist student gets flown out to the boat. Nice enough guy, you know, nothing against him. And we proceed to try to catch a shark or they do. I pretty much was just watching until they needed some help once the shark was on board. At which point I'm embarrassed to say that Per their instruction, I sat on top of the shark in order to hold it down. Of course, it fought the entire time that it was being reeled in. Another scary part, for the shark at least, if you're in the water, is that while we were reeling it in, it was a sandbar shark, by the way, sandbar shark, and as we were doing that, a great hammerhead began pursuit. Why? Because this is an animal caught on a line sending out the signals that it is in trouble. That means potential prey to any other predators in the area. And sure enough, we were in a time struggle against a great hammerhead coming and making a meal out of the shark that we were trying to bring on board the boat. You see this theme actually quite common in fisherman videos where they're like, oh my God, look at that. And to me, I think it's quite horrifying because there they are reeling in an animal that's stuck on a hook fighting to get free. It can't. And then here come these predators that are going to make an easy meal of it because it has no fighting chance whatsoever. I think that's a pretty bad way to go out. But anyway, back to the story. So they managed to get the shark on board before the hammerhead can get it. And on board, I'm witnessing, you know, some blood and that it's, you know, obviously doesn't want to be on the deck of the boat. And once enough of us are holding the shark down, this marine biologist proceeds to uh, bolt a little plastic tag into its fin. It wasn't a satellite tag or anything like that because it was literally just a little piece of plastic ID tag. How that works scientifically is that if a fisherman recatches that shark, he can choose to call the 
scientists who tag that shark and let them know that they caught it so that they get some sort of data about movement of the shark or the number of times that a shark has recaught. I can't resist talking about that plastic tag without jumping over to my first visit to the Natal Sharks board where the day's entertainment, the dissection victim also had a plastic tag in it, a spaghetti tag, and this shark had been tagged by local researchers and was killed by the nets of the Natal Sharks board, who claim simultaneously to save sharks through their research. While their mandate is to kill enough sharks that it reduces the chances of people encountering a shark when they go in the ocean. I'll let you think about that on your own, but it does not add up. But in any case, I'm no scientist, but I can give you the conclusion of the data right here. And it's that there's one more shark missing from the population of this species and that a conservation company filled with scientists killed it. That all gets a little weird to me. You have to pretty much have faith that something good is coming out of this. What I do know clearly is that that tag didn't help that shark or that shark species. That shark fought for its life at the end of a hook, almost got eaten, got pulled onto a boat, had people sit on it, as I learned later on, potentially damaging its internal organs, had a hole drilled in its fin, and then got thrown back in the ocean. We did not save that shark. That tag did not save that shark. That tag did not help save the species of that shark. That shark was a prop for a TV show. And that's when I began Googling tagging for TV. And I found out that that was an actual term. In case I wasn't clear, yes, I am embarrassed of my naive participation in this show. What's that saying? You see in others what you dislike most about yourself? This was definitely the beginning of me starting to think differently about tagging. I went back to South Africa in 2007 and met researchers who did not believe in invasive tagging, researchers who told me that they felt that they had already met the plateau of what they could do with the existing data, but that wasn't stopping anyone from continuing to go out and just tag and tag and tag. So of course, the natural question is, what exactly are we accomplishing with all this data when we're going out there repeatedly tagging? Speaking of repeatedly tagging, you can see that there's multiple tags on individual sharks. I also started to notice how much attention was being given to shows that were centered around fishing for sharks. I'm sorry, tagging sharks, which basically turns them into fishing shows. The ultimate goal is to catch and subdue an animal, bring it on board so everyone can have a nice look at it and attach some sort of scientific stuff to it, even if that is just a piece of plastic. But things really changed when guys from a couple of fishing TV programs teamed up with a scientist Dr. Michael Domeyer to get his research permit to go out and fish for great white sharks. And I was very upset by this. A lot of people were excited about it. I mean, talk about the ultimate fishing show. You get to go fishing for great white sharks, which by the way, is not allowed. That's the whole point of them being protected. They're supposed to be immune from this sort of treatment, unless you have a research permit. And you can justify this if you're going out there and saving the sharks. Of course, no one seems to care about the fact that these sharks are already protected. You know, the other thing people don't think about with this tagging is that they're going out and doing the tagging where people already know the sharks are. That's how they successfully managed to tag those sharks. And as a cinematographer, I can't go out and get shots of sharks without them being covered in tags. The only sharks that you see with their natural perfection and their unblemished bodies are the newcomers, the ones that no one has seen before. And then it's a frenzy to be the ones who tag that shark. Fast forward to 2009, again, up at the Farallon Islands where I worked and still went out to, and that TV show moves up there and notoriously damages a couple of sharks, only manages to catch and tag two, and those two eventually were never heard from again. People who work out there say that they died of their injuries. Of course, the people who worked on the show say that that is not the case. So for those of you who don't know me, you know, I'm not just making this stuff out. I'm out in the field talking to people and interviewing them and discovering this stuff. 
So it's pretty impossible not to be influenced a little bit by what you're finding out. It doesn't help that during my documentation over the years, I was discovering a clear divide between those who supported invasive tagging and those who were against it. And those who were against it were those who were independently funded and didn't need to do it versus those who required funding and were at the mercy of someone else and therefore were more agreeable to participate in it if it meant funding were coming their way. That didn't improve my opinion of the whole scientific process at all. It also didn't help that I was discovering a pattern of generalities and no real solid concrete direct answers to my challenges of showing proof that this was benefiting the sharks. Instead, I was always hearing something along the lines of, or a variation of, it allows us to collect data that could help us learn how to save the sharks. You know, some rambling BS like that. You notice in those words, none of it actually says, it allows us to protect sharks. It allows us to conserve sharks. It allows us to collect data to learn how we could save them. Despite the failure at the Farallon Islands, of course they use their marketing to herald it as success and they get another season with another network under another name down in South Africa where they went and just bum rushed each of the three locations that white sharks are aggregating in South Africa and tagged as many as they could. And of course one famously died on camera and then people there say that more died again you know you can look at the animals and see the condition of the animals you can consider the fact that the chief scientist on board looked at one and said it's dead, She's dead. and then it you know recovered and kind of swam slash floated off and you could consider the fact that the sharks tags failed or the sharks stopped moving um, and draw your own conclusions about the condition of those animals. Sadly, I lost a friend over this in South Africa who at first said that she was against Osearch showing up there and was sad about it but didn't have any choice because her boss said she had to do it. And the next thing I know, she's trying to distance herself from me on social media. And when I went down to South Africa to collect interviews and opinions on the matter, she of course declined to participate and when I said well you weren't really a supporter of this how can you justify it you know what what is this data gonna do for the sharks and her last line to me was we'll just have to wait 10 years and see not not very convincing and by the way we're coming up on 10 years and things have only gone downhill for white sharks in South Africa. But the resonating theme here is that this was all on television. And then you start watching Shark Week and everyone else is trying to get more shark tagging on television. I don't like that. You know, I'm a little bit of a hippie in that regard. I kind of would rather the sharks not be damaged in that manner. But of course you have your excuse that this is for the good of the species. Well, that's where it gets really complicated because I don't see evidence of that. And when you start saying things like, I don't see evidence of that, you're sort of calling out scientists for engaging in bullshit conservation. There are so many excuses for tagging sharks, but when these excuses revolve around conservation, at the core of this motivation is an attempt to overcome human greed and political corruption. No amount of tagging can change that. Corruption is corruption, which means that we're already ignoring facts. We're already ignoring doing the right thing. Tagging will not change that as every decade of data has proven. That doesn't make scientists bad guys for going into the field with an intention of doing good but if we're not actually accomplishing the goal are we distracting from accomplishing the goal 
I think that's enough for this episode. We'll pick up from there. Bonus thought. I was debating whether to include this, so I'll just put it at the end for those of you who are still listening. I can't help but compare my naivety of wanting to be involved in this to my naivety um, when I was a child and was taken to a marine park and saw wh killer whales and things like that. And of course, I was awed by it. It was amazing. It seemed a little messed up to me, but uh, for the most part, what was on my mind was wow, look at these animals, how can I be around them? And the answer was to become a zoologist or a biologist. So your innocent desire is to pursue the love that you're feeling for these animals and you want to help them and get involved and the pathway to that that is laid out to you by adults is to pursue a science degree. And Somewhere along that line, you become one of those scientists who sadly wakes up to realize that you aren't accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish and change careers, or you're so deeply invested in the career and your schooling that you have no choice but to continue to pursue that line of work. You always have a choice, but you feel like you might not have a choice.